Hey, hey happy, happy campers. campers! Welcome back to Camp Shady Birch. Ooh, ooh. What week are we? Oh, God. 27. We're 27. 27, you guys. We're 13 weeks away from giving ba- birth to this big baby. <laughs> um, Jonathan, what did we do this week to tell the campers about? So we ended up seeing the Real Housewives of New York live from Philadelphia, but really Phoenixville, Pennsylvania. Yeah, like as as like, would you remember like you had a camp song by Countess, Countess Luann. Luann? It was Chic C'est La Vie, C'est Bon C'est Bon. Yeah, so I saw it on Instagram and I was like, okay, Luann's gonna be like in this town called Phoenixville, which is really close to where Jonathan's from in Concha Hawkins. So I was like, oh my god, let's just drive down and go to the show for the night. And we thought it was gonna be like this cabaret performance by Luann, um, but it wasn't. <laughs> at all it was like a sit down like conversation with an author yeah or like it felt like very much like a reunion yeah type deal with an author that we don't know yeah he was a good um host though he was their mics were super low yeah. um but the theater was gorgeous it was the colonial theater mm-hmm. and i got a ticket to the vip so we got to do like a like a meet and greet with them ahead of time and it was like a big open room with like 80 80 women in there and a couple bottles of cheap wine and some shitty charcuterie and we were all excited we were all waiting <laughs> and um they walked in and it was like so overwhelming to see them like did you in think it was flash. crazy yeah i thought it was crazy luann looks first off they all look fantastic they do but luann i was not expecting to be like oh my god yeah she's been hitting that ozempic really hard she's been hitting that tanning bed <laughs> and <laughs> yeah. her makeup artist needs a raise yeah she was looking snatched she looks so good she also looked like I don't know if you, you would agree. She looked like at peace. Yeah. Oh my God. She was very zen. Like relaxed in her oats. Yeah. I was inspired by it. So we got to like get in this line with all these women. They're like, everybody go to the side and you're all going to get a chance to get a photo with them. And like the assistant took the iPhone to take the photo, which I thought was really sweet. But um, I don't know how you felt about this, but we were like getting in line and we were getting closer. And I was just like kind of gawking at them because I was so amazed. And then we got up in line and we stood next to them. And everyone keeps asking, what did I say to them? And I really didn't say anything. You you did, though. I did. And it was like barely anything. I was like fixing my position. I was like, okay, chic say la vie. And then Ramona and, and Luann turned to me at the same time and said, c'est bon, c'est bon. And it was like, well, okay. I was living in that moment. They and give also, you energy. Ramona was being a little standoffish, as she does. Always. Which is like fine, because it's she's, so not, she's not my favorite. She's got her own issues, and if she didn't have to be in the picture, she didn't have to be in the picture, but she was there. And um, But for her to like spring into action and say that was a little taken aback, but it was really... It was it was fun. <laughs> Ramona did. If you watch the show, like I think you'll get a kick out of this. Ramona, when she watched the room, looked like she did not want to be there. No. Which is just like, honestly, for me so funny because like that's what you would expect from her like i will say i don't know how you feel but i feel like they were exactly how i would picture them like they were the same on the show than they were on the panel you know what i mean like dorinda is one of my favorites and after after like we did the meet and greet we went back down to the lobby and it was on this like upper deck of this theater so it had like a railing and it was like up a couple flights so after the meet and greet everyone's in the lobby getting food and they could kind of see so when we were down there um luann came out and waved to everybody and then so did Dorinda, and the the crowd is screaming like it's Princess Diana. And, and in the background, Ramona's inside. She's like, "Baby, I'm not getting paid enough to walk out there to wave." Like she didn't. Get <laughs> She's not like, coming out. She ended up coming out later, but I was like so Ramona to be like, "I'm not going out there for the commoners." Like, I know. And Dorinda was loving it. Dorinda's um, so sweet. She has also. Hold, I just want to say that we are. By rewatching it, I'm saying we started from the beginning. We have not gotten past like 2017, 2018. 2018, more season so, 10. And I know that they're problematic and they be- become problematic. So we're not supporting that. But we, I mean, honestly, are ignorant of anything that happens after Luann's arrest because that's where we're at right now. Yeah, it was really funny because the last episode we're watching, she's being arrested. And then we're seeing her and I'm like, baby, you look sickening. And it was so funny because on the panel, someone asked her, like, what is something that, you, like, what's a question you always get asked or something? And Luann said, oh, people always always say or people always say to me like you look so much better in real life and she was like well what the hell does that mean just the the audience i'm like this bitch is like the same on and off camera like she was funny she was she was funny and um yeah we definitely drank a little more than anticipated but we met so many oh my god i probably like met i would say like 50 different groups of like women campers included yeah people who watch our videos it was so fun we actually went out with a couple of them yeah, after. We, yeah. <laughs> someone bought us around a shot some spot <laughs> some of our some of our campers were happy at the show and they got us a little wasted um no i was i was 
absolutely obliterated. I really was. But if I'm going to watch the housewives live, I got to live the housewives culture, which means to get drunk and make it nice. And we certainly made Phoenix feel nice. That yes. Night. We stomped around like water buffaloes. That's for sure. So the next day we woke up in the hotel room. My head is pounding. It looks so dark in the room and it's literally um, 9 a.m. I, they, I will say hotels, they have unlocked the code or cracked the code rather on how to do a blackout curtain. It's true. Like it was dark in there, but we ended up like checking out. Jonathan had to get a haircut and what happened, babe? You were, you were hurting. Well, to, uh, what are you allergic to? I think it's really important. I'm allergic to NSAIDs and like, so I can't have aspirins. I can't have ibuprofen. I know no, that they're not all under the same umbrella, but I have the same allergic reaction. I like break out into hives and my throat closes up. It's like symmetrical on my face. So one of the doctors is like, oh, that could be a possible heart condition. If I any of the nurses out there know what's going on or can tell me something that I can take other than drinking water because that's literally what my doctor was telling me. He's like, just if you have a headache, drink water. I'm like, excellent. Great. Thank you so much. <laughs> so if I'm hungover, I just have to, you know, grin and bear it. And what helps me is food. So we went to Wawa and I couldn't, I couldn't even do it. And it's been a long time since I couldn't do breakfast after having a night out, but I had my little hash brown and then I got a sandwich and I put it on the dashboard and I said, I I cannot do this. You were like shaking in the car. Oh, yeah. I had the shakes really bad. Definitely didn't need the coffee, too. Yeah. That didn't yeah. help. It didn't help. Were you like quiet at the um, like hairdresser? So then I go to the hairdresser and I love my hairdresser and the shampoo girl. They're fantastic. And um, so I go and I tell her straight up. I'm like, hey, I'm really hungover. I'm like, I'm so sorry. Can we just like keep it at a low decibel? Of course, it's loud as hell in there. There's a lot of men in there. But I love my girlies. She took care of me. She put the, the the steam towel on my face. I was like, can I just like hang out here for like 20 minutes? And she's like, unfortunately, no, you need to get in your chair. <laughs> so I get in the chair and she's doing the thing and talking at a low decibel, which I appreciated. So shout out to her. But I don't I didn't know how I was going to do it for an hour sitting in that chair, looking at myself in the mirror, just just thinking about the choices that I made and how I would have made them differently. My eyes were gaunt. My hands were shaky. Morale was low. Morale was low and I just, I was so spacey. I didn't know what was going on. She's like, is, is this good? And I'm like, yeah, absolutely. This is really fun to do. And I love it here, but I want to leave. So it was a little rough. It was like the longest haircut I ever had in my life. Um, so afterwards, I knew that you needed food because that's the only thing that cures you. So I was like, um, where can we go? Where can we go? And my favorite restaurant of all time, Campers, let's say on the count of three. One, two, three. Cheesecake, Cheesecake Factory. Factory. Woo! <laughs> no, I, like, so I told you guys last episode, I wanted to go to the mall before these trips. So I was like, hey, hungover or not, let's, let's just like power through. Let's go to the Cheesecake Factory and let's just kind of like cure this hangover. Yeah. And I walk in and I'm instantly home. I'm greeted with the most horrendous decor in the world. Awful. A really um, young host who doesn't care if she works there or Urban Outfitters across the way. Underpaid. And and it was beautiful. The whole experience was beautiful. I will say, every time we go to the King of Prussia Cheesecake Factory, they love to put baby in a corner. Mm -hmm. Why are we always put in that back room? We're always put in the little back corner and it's not... It's cold it, back there. Yeah. The lighting is harsh. I want to be in the hustle and bustle in the middle. Hungover or not, I did yeah. not want to be in the back room. But... We took it on the chin. Mm -hmm. What'd you order? Um, okay, so the best thing to drink when you're hungover is what? Dr. Pepper. People will say Coke. For me, it's a DP. I love it. You love a um, DP. And then I wanted to keep it light. I needed some roughage. <laughs> Lord knows I needed roughage. I needed some greens. And I ordered off the Skinny Licious salad. I love that little Mexican salad they have on there. And I don't know why I said little because that thing is, it's huge. Oh, we can post it. I'll, we'll post a picture because I have one. It was huge, but it had an avocado crema, the tortilla strips, the chicken. I had that with, um, and obviously it started with the brown bread. Mm. And um, I felt good afterwards. Yeah. What did you eat? I had shrimps camping because you love shrimps camping. Anything camp related, I am down to order. I couldn't finish it all though. It was too rich, and I knew I was pushing myself over the edge. I said, Jonathan, Jonathan Ellen Carson. It's what I call myself sometimes. You need to put the fork down. That and I did. It's not your middle name. <laughs> no, it's not, but it's what I call myself sometimes. You also started, I love this. So Jonathan is hungover and he sits down and orders a water and a bowl <laughs> of chowder. Wait, why did you, you're like literally shaking. Eyes are like bloodshot and you're like, I'll, have, I'll start with the cup of chowder, please. When do I ever order anything? I never order anything you to begin with. You never order an appetizer and you never order chowder. But listen. It fell out of my mouth. Was it good? It was so, yeah. The ratio of clam to chowder, impeccable. Listen, I feel like 
everything from the cheesecake factory is everything is good there even their chowder was lip smacking delicious the little clams you can just chew on them for hours what's going on with yeah. that have you guys ever had we were talking about that lunch have you guys ever had like a clam in a clam chowder and you chew it and it just never goes away <laughs> well, like it's like a piece of gum yeah, you said it's a piece of gum oh my god we were loving it it was really it was a real good experience i felt better after i did i did too as well we also walked like a mile in our louboutins around that mall from point a to point b we did um and then we we decided that like hey we're gonna take our own advice like last last week's episode and we're gonna we're gonna strut this mall we're gonna get our steps in we're gonna come back to life and we're gonna do shop till we drop and we have a collection of notes that we've put together for the campers on our thoughts on our modern day mall experience some good some bad all definitely chaotic do you want to start <laughs> with one and we'll kind of just work through opposites okay yeah speaking of stepping yeah. we made our way to Foot Locker. Foot Locker, robots in disguise. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Very much that. Um, and you were looking for shoes because we're going to Disney. We're leaving tomorrow. And you needed new shoes that were like comfy and walkable, but fashionable and cute. Like sneak, like running shoes. Like I don't want like a leather bound shoe. I want something that's moisture wicking, something with some good support around the ankles, lightweight, durable, mm. but cute. That's the takeaway. So, what did you find on that wall? Nothing cute, babe. Nothing cute. Why are running shoes as a category so heinous? I want to speak to my Hoka girls real quick. I've heard so much inc- like amazing things about the support and the quality of a Hoka running shoe, H-O-K-A, for those that do not know. But every time I look at those walls, I feel like I'm looking at a 1965 candy striper nursing ad okay they don't look cute to me i'm not into the vibe and i can't wear them i can't i can't wear a shoe that looks like that and you know what? it's just it's a personal preference but i think the running shoe category as a whole needs to be revamped i'm seeing too much teal who's wearing teal it's like they're going out of their way to put like more mustard and magenta on everything that they possibly could i don't understand it and i just want some more neutral running shoes that was my thought i went to a bunch of stores that was a thought. And then we made our way to, were we in Zoomies? We were in PacSun. We were, I think it was Zoomies. Zoomies for that. And you found a little critter that we recognized from many moon ago. Oh, I did. What was it called? What's that little bunny called? Uh, it's Happy Bunny. If you're watching on YouTube, he's going to put up the picture of it's Happy Bunny. And if you're not watching, just do a little Google search, pause the episode, because you need to remember this, because this was a cultural moment, I would say in the mid 2000s. Yeah. That sassy little bitch of a bunny. That's <laughs> yeah. why I'm so gay. That's that contributed to my gayness right there because I was like, oh, that bitch is sassy. Yeah. Do you have some like things? What do they say? Um, hi loser. <laughs> it's like, <laughs> let me just sorry if you're listening to this and you didn't Google. I'm just, it's a little bunny. You probably remember it. You, you probably do. know what I'm talking about. It came a lot on stickers. There was a lot of sticker packs, a lot of T-shirts for girls. Folders. Yeah, folders, notebooks, all of it, rulers even, and it was really aimed towards girls who were like moody Judies. So the one is like, hi loser. Um, <laughs> It's all about me. Deal with it. Wait, read the other one that you just told me off camera. That one's funnier. I love that one. Prevent violence. Give me your lunch money. <laughs> on a lunchbox. It says prevent violence. Give me your lunch money. It's like a pink lunchbox with a blue bunny on it. Like, peace out. It's, it's like cute. So we saw that at Zoomies and they were on like baby girl tees. Like yeah. they were cute. Yeah. So that's definitely taking. So once again, as you know, they're not going to stop with this nostalgic res- res- resurgence because creative marketing has just plummeted and now all we're doing is just bringing back old stuff. I'm getting over it. I'm really getting over these like, bring it back now, y'all. Some of the stuff is cute. Like this, like this, the little bag that you found with no, the I'm happy bunny on it. No, I'm not saying it's not cute, but I just like, at what point are we going to like come up with new stuff? I feel like everyone and every like, item of the world whether it be tv clothing food everything is just a redo of something else like sunny d vodka seltzers i was talking about that on tiktok yesterday and i got a lot of i got a lot of hate on that and i want to i want to say something to you guys if you were if you were spending 11 dollars at a restaurant and they put sunny d and vodka in a glass i would be livid but y'all want to pay that in a can sunny d is poison make have an orange juice have a mimosa and grow up i want those off of the shelves i wrote i already wrote a letter to corporate Costco, <laughs> they threw it in the shredder. Anyways, what else did we find out at the mall? Oh, can I say one? Yeah. So this was a good one, you guys. I'm obsessed with Abercrombie. 
Okay. Mm -hmm. They're having a resurgence and you know, what's good about it. It's modern. They've evolved. And I really think Abercrombie as a store, I never would wear them even when I was a teenager, but now I love their neutrals. Your brown sweater. Have you worn that on the podcast yet? No, because I look a little frumpy and I I ripped a hole in the elbow. I couldn't disagree on that statement. I think you look like a a hot little brownie and I think you're great in it. It looks so good on you. You should wear it more. Um, They have like the best like basics right now, I think. So I was looking for one in the mall and I came across one. I was like, oh my God, we're at Abercrombie. And I walked walked in I was like ew what is wrong with Abercrombie has it not got the remodel yet it was like neon lights in there so much rip faded denim I was like panicking I was like what is this store where's my Abercrombie and then Jonathan looks at me and he goes we're in Aeropostale that explains everything you guys <laughs> Wait, well, they're very eerily similar. We said that last week. Yeah, we were not in Abercrombie and Fitch, though. I don't know how we got that mix up. And when you, I swear it was like a scene where you were like, you know, in Kath and Kim where she's walking through the street and she's like, oh, oh, and it's just like the room is spinning around her and it's blurry and it's all these crazy scary angles. That was you looking around the Because I was like, where, where is the Abercrombie that I know? But <laughs> nope, Aeropostale has not updated their branding since 2009 and it shows. Aeropostale, you're next on the chopping block and you deserve it. In the bin, bitch. Speaking of that time frame of clothing, Jonathan insisted that he wanted to walk into what store? (laughs) Hollister. What were you trying to find in there? Just a piece of myself that I lost in there many moon ago. (laughs) And I think I I may have found it in a Nicki Minaj shirt that was printed in 2009. Guys, there's no helping. I'm sorry. It It was bad in there There it wasn't even like cute tacky it was just bad i think it's not even that it's bad i think you're 30 now keep your voice down no no because okay if we were to go down onto like their sales metrics and who their target audience is i don't think it's 30 year olds okay i think they're they're attracted to a younger audience i think those would go in there and be fine but babe i really cannot have you like leaving the house and a button up that has a hollister emblem on it okay i really wanted a t-shirt that said like hollister california with the little bear we back in the day loved it though that jake fragrance is still on sale there you mm-hmm. guys that one smelled so good do you remember those like weird this is a good one they were like those gray sweatpants and they had like that like almost like it's like embroidered on it would say like hollister down the leg of it yeah and it was like red like so, it was red yeah it was literally red i was gonna say that and it was like sewn on but it was, it was like a part of it but yeah like, uh-huh. yeah i think those are really heinous I had those and it was in like a t- it was like a bright aquamarine color with the red stitching on it. I was also gonna say they did the aquamarine was such a big one there and yeah. they also would pair that with the yellow. Mm-hmm. It was a really triggering color palette back then, but it was okay. That was giving flounder. They def flounder, mm. that's that exact color. It's definitely like gotten better, I would say, but it's not like our we're not we don't need to be there. No, there was no reason for us to go in there. And it was very bizarre and I wish we hadn't done it. And I'm embarrassed and ashamed and I wish I could take it back, but I can't. Also, really quickly, I saw Alex Earl's ad on um Forever 21. She's doing a partnership with Juicy Couture. If you know Alex Earl, she's a really popular girl on TikTok right now. She's like the it TikTok girl. And I saw her on the like the whole window of Forever 21. And I'm just so happy for her. I don't know her. She doesn't know who I am, but to see a TikToker do a full campaign incredible Mm -hmm. i think we will let like like i want you to talk about what store we spent 90 percent of the day in for your full debriefing take it away where did did you go i went back to my old stomping grounds literally the shop that i used to work at was lush we did touch on it last time but i just needed to like pop my head in i haven't been to one in years you had to do it I had to do it. I had to do it to him. I had no intentions of buying anything, though I do need a face moisturizer. I don't know if I would buy their face moisturizer. It's a face mask, perhaps. But boy, oh boy, have they changed their interior. Um, I did take you on a tour. Of I'll- every ingredient. <laughs> every He would take every single, like, and it wasn't even the bath bombs, the fun shit. He was opening up the skincare and the hair care, and he was like, and this one... And this one's this one was a popular seller in the springtime because you you had a story for everything, didn't you? It came right out of me, guys. I was so fucking annoying. I was annoying myself. I could hear myself. No, you it was were an out of body experience watching myself try to sell you a product yeah. that I was just bitching about seven days ago. I think you should have put on an apron because everybody clocked out and you clocked it. I did. They were giving lazy energy in there. I was like, guys, I know it's a Thursday, but come on. It was so funny. Like, that was the only time I've ever been to a lusher I wasn't assaulted. And it was because you were assaulting me instead. Yeah. <laughs> 
But we did. We had a good time. We bought one little moment from there, and that was that. He would like show me a bar of soap, you guys, and he'd be like, "Doesn't this just smell like summer in the car with like the wind on your face, and like you have a little lemony, but a little bit of ice in it, and it's from yesterday, but it was it's still cold because it was a cooler night, but now it's warmer out." And I'm like, "Babe, this literally, uh, where are you getting these notes from?" <laughs> You're like, "It smells like patchouli." Yeah. <laughs> Oh, I hate patchouli. Because well, I, I, I recognize the sense and it brings me back to a time, a very specific time that yeah, I had. And I, I just, that's just how my brain works. I'm sorry. I, right I let you have it. You'd be like, oh, look at this one. This one used to be made with actual honeycomb, but not anymore. You're like, the products are going downhill. Um, <laughs> but we had fun. And then we exited the mall afterwards and we waved to Ani Ann's. She tried to assault us with her rich, rich smells of pretzels, yeah. but she couldn't do it this time, you guys. I said, no, no, no. I just had my skinny delicious salad and my Dr. Pepper. I'm okay. It was close though. I had one, one leg in line. You did. You, you like your body almost like weaved you to the line it's sick the way that they have it figured out overall though i still am obsessed with malls i love the malls the king of pressure mall though is a very special mall some malls are really boring and really dying but klp they really have it together there it's one of the best malls ever guys attention campers please meet at the old flagpole under the tall pine for morning announcements Morning announcements. Attention campers. Last week's lice screening was alarmingly negative. Guys, we've talked about this. If your pillow looks like a used biodegradable coffee filter, throw it in the bin. That is why we will be coming around to all of the cabins and we do have brand new pillows for everybody that was generously donated by Patty's Pillow Pagoda from the mall. So shout out to them. Thank you so much. Let's uh, work on getting that lice number down. Oh, so Piercing Pagoda has um, branched out into the pillow industry? Yeah, Patty's Pillow Pagoda. You can't stop Patty from selling those pillows from her big old pagoda. <laughs> okay, you have, uh, you have a morning announcement for us? Yeah, I can go first. Um, guys, really big news in the soda industry. Quietly, three weeks ago, without anybody's noticing, including myself, Sierra Mist went under. Can you believe it? Sierra Mist, the famous Sprite ripoff from the big brand Pepsi, has um, has been taken off the shelves. I, I saw a TikTok this morning, and it was a girl working at a fast food place, probably a Taco Bell, and she was scraping off the Sierra Mist <sighs> sign, and she was like, the end of an era. So instantly, I went to panic mode. I was like, oh my God, why do I feel so protective over something I don't even care about? Yeah. And I went online, and I found out that Pepsi canceled Sierra Mist. Um, they've had an uphill battle with this soda brand for many years now. Sprite is the lion's share of that kind of demographic, and when Pepsi introduced it, it was kind of a low build. And then for a couple years in the mid-2010s, like I think maybe like 2013, they like they stopped calling it that and they were like it's the mist twist and then they were like oh that was a bad idea and they took a they brought it back to sierra mist and it just wasn't picking up momentum apparently i don't know where this number come for this number comes from but this article i read said that sierra mist um only makes up 0.1 percent of soda revenue as sprite um packs in 7.1 percent of all soda revenue so sprites just dominating that category and they also like do better branding like they have that like limited and cranberry one that people love like there's some fun elements to it so pepsi said no more That's Sierra sad. Mist, but they've reintroduced basically the same flavor under a different name okay what's the new name it's a little bit more citrusy and a little bit more crisper is what they're advertising it as and it's called starry s-t-a-r-y and they're hoping to attract a newer audience through gen z to kind of build up this new kind of brand i'm interested to try it i've always felt like sierra mist was too sweet mm -hmm. too sweet not enough citrusy and this one is 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 fixing that issue they're toning down the sugar they're bringing up the little bit of a sour tartness and and yeah. the crispness of it so i like the idea behind it um and I'm, at the end of the day i am really not that attached to sierra mist i just can't believe they could never get it to work yeah that's it i guess that they just didn't have too much too much branding behind it because when i think sierra mist i just think the sweeter sister of Sprite. Yeah. And guess what? She got canceled. She's thrown in the bin. Yeah, she's in the bin. I think of Taco Bell because Taco Bell has um, Pepsi products. And do you know why? Because Coke, Pepsi was trying so hard to like get people to drink Pepsi. And they were figuring out like the most consumers of soda at that time when they were doing all this research was at fast food restaurants. So they thought it was cheaper to buy 
the conglomerate of KFC and talk about like Pepsi owns them mm. in order to sell their products in their store. Like oh. that was the cheaper solution to like bring up business was to buy an entire fast food chain so they would be forced to sell their products. Yeah, Coke is a force. Yeah, Coke Coke is a force, but I will say um in the Pepsi market, I love I love some of their products and when I go to Taco Bell, for me, mm-hmm. it's Baja Blast. I already knew. Baja Blast is I love Dr Pepper, right? But Baja Blast is that big. Bitch. Yeah, she I, she clocks in and she never disappoints ever. Oh my god, I don't I don't care for the freezes. Do you? I don't think I've ever had one. I'm not like a frozen drink kind of guy. I don't mind them. I don't think I've ever had one. Well, look at it. It's Sierra Mist's conversation, and we're not even talking about her anymore. That's much sucks. <laughs> um, but yeah, no, this is just a formal a formal um, acknowledgement of her career, her failure, her downfall, and her funeral. Um, campers, just so you know, we will no longer be serving Sierra Mist on camp. We can't get another word of it. Sorry, guys. Sorry about that. It's not our fault. We can't help it. But we will be having Starry. I know. We'll try it soon. So there was a soda commercial. I don't remember what soda was, but the song was, this was like years ago. It was the Starry Eyed Surprise song. Do you remember that? Oh my, Starry Eyed Surprise. Sundown to sunrise. No, no, they should use that though. Well, I'm wondering if that was Sierra Mist. Oh, I don't know. And then that was, they were like, what are we going to call this new one? They were like, what ads have we done in the past? And then they looked that up. Maybe there seems like a correlation there. We'll have to get back to you on that campers, but. Um, No, that is incorrect. That was a Diet Coke commercial. (laughs) So I I quickly fact checked that and um yeah that's on that. Well, rest in peace. Yeah. To Sierra Mist, you will be Sierra Mist. <gasps> wow. <laughs> oh my god, that took my breath away. That was so good. That was like RuPaul good. Thank you. You will be Sierra Mist. Did you were you all sitting on that the entire time? No, it just literally popped into my head and it How came did I out. think about that. I don't know. Oh my god, that was good. Anyways. <laughs> Do you have a story for us this week? That was yes. good. Thank you. All right. So hard left turn here, campers. So this article is coming from the New York Post by Ben Cost. And uh, the title of this is 28 Girls Hospitalized with Anxiety After Playing with a Ouija Board. Sounds like a true story. So it opens up with, they're not in good spirits. <laughs> 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 oh, wait, this is like so. I can't with the wordplay today. They're not in good spirits. Uh, I'm not going to read the whole article, but essentially, yeah. there were, and also, there was a lot of conflicting information. And I need everybody just to get it together because it took place. This happened in Colombia. Yes. A lot of places said it was 30 American schoolgirls who were going to school in Colombia. Other places said they were Colombian schoolgirls going to school in Colombia. Another article said Colombian schoolgirls in Mexico. So I'm not sure what it was, but it's. 30, this one says American girls who were going to school in Colombia, and they were playing with a Ouija board at their school in Colombia. Um, what so, class was that? <laughs> it's a great question. This was extracurricular. Witchcraft 101? Yes. Okay. The dark arts. So, you know, the <laughs> girls, they just, they they put their fishnets on and they lit those little spooky candles and they got their their papyrus books out and they started casting their spells when one by one they started getting possessed so there's a picture of this one girl being carried out i don't know if there's a video it looks like a screen grab from a video where's the video i want to see the video i didn't deep dive so it could be out there but this picture of this girl did you see it no let me just hang on i'm going to show it to you so if you're watching this on youtube i'm going to put it up it'll be on our um our instagram but this girl is literally being carried out like fully flopped yeah, over. Like, girl, you're in school. There's no need for you not to have shoes on. Put the shoes on, girly. She's just being such drama. It's literally me after doing one chore in my childhood. I'm just <laughs> like, I'm exhausted. Fatigued. I can't. Fatigued. <laughs> Fatigues. I can't do this anymore. So the girls were admitted to a hospital and they were accompanied by their parents and school faculty. So the article is making it seem like there's... um something that the school isn't telling us. But what I'm reading on the face of the superintendent in this photo is that he's just over the shit. He's like, we're we're over these girls' antics. Yeah, so I don't think that there's anything the school's not telling us. I think it's a reach for the article. I think the girls are being drama. It's giving hysteria, 1600s. So Lady Gaga in, in the new Joker movie where she's playing Harley Quinn, she and I don't know if this is the title of the movie, but she posted a caption with the photo and it says Foley Adieu, which if you don't know is like kind of like hysteria. It usually happens in families or people within close proximities. There was a crazy story about a family who went on a road trip and one by one, each of them started going crazy by proxy because 
because the person around them was going crazy. Yeah. So it's this weird phenomenon that there's like not much scientific research behind, but it actually does happen where one person goes like nutso and it triggers like a synapsis in someone else's brain that mentally makes them go through it. So that's probably what happened to these girls. One girl was playing a trick. She took it too far and everybody just is going to end up like in the ward or something. That's scary. So when they're not sneaking ever clear into their dorms, they're just, you know, practicing um, witchcraft with Vecna. I've never played with a Ouija board. I've always been too scared. Um, on my, when I was growing up, my parents told me they're like, witchcraft is real. If you invite the devil into your life, be prepared to handle the consequences. So one time I was at a high school party. I was Lydia Junior in high school. I was at Jenna Leger's house and there was probably like 15 people there and everyone was in the basement smoking weed out of bongs and Jenna pulled the Ouija board out and me and Carly were like, we're not doing this. We're not doing this. And me and Carly went upstairs and we sat in the living room and we put our like our NV3 up on the shelf and we made a homemade music video while everyone was screaming in the basement on a Ouija board because we were like, we are separating ourselves from this drama. So if I was one of those girls, I would have left. I am strong enough to stand on my own. I don't fuck with that shit. It scares me. It really does. It scares me. That's a good point. I used to be so into it. I would literally like, so when we went to Phoenix, while we were with my friend Gabby and in high school, we would go to cemeteries at like midnight literally just us even if it was like raining we would go and we would light our little candles and play with ouija boards and now i'm like why would i do that like you're really not inviting anything positive you're just curious about what's on the other side like i've got enough uh, enough luggage in this in this lifetime to not have to bring in someone else's luggage yeah from please. their dead lifetime get you're good babe you had your chance yeah. it's mine now don't come talking to my door yeah so i have um besides our coasters downstairs i'm, I'm staying away from them i'm staying away from yeah. Ouija boards and you should too i think they're cute from afar i like them on prints i just don't want them in my house it was really crazy when i went to toys r us like before they shut down like when i was like in high school um i noticed that they sell them there like a game board company makes them. Yeah. So weird, like Hasbro or something. I'm not yeah. even joking. Like it's the the brothers. What is it? The it's like a pot. I was like looking at the shelf. I'm like Life Monopoly. The Ouija board. Like yeah. what the fuck is that on the shelf? It glows like, in the dark. I had that one. Uh, is that one as scary as like a real one? Is that a real one? They're all real apparently. Yeah. I mean, technically, it's just like a, a an item of divination, and you're inviting. Like you could do it with anything. It doesn't have to be like official. If you're channeling that energy to the other side, mm -hmm. you're just you know allowing. Mm -hmm. You're opening doors that you can't close, babe. You are opening doors. You cannot close. I will live my ignorant and happy little life. I think that's better for me. Yes. It's foolish. It's ghoulish. Grab your bug juice and bear spray campers. It's time to pack it up and take a hike. Welcome back to take a hike. Take a hike. What is making me upset? What's pissing me off? What's just like I want to tell to walk away from me and take a hike? What are you feeling? What are you getting upset about? I was thinking deep this week. Okay, what were you thinking about? So I just got my hair cut this morning and I love it, I love it, I love it. But it made me think about like something. You know when you go to get your hair cut and you hate it and you've been going to the same barber for a long time or a hairdresser or even getting like your nails done or something, right? And you're like, wait, I don't like this. I hate that feeling of feeling guilty about switching your barber, mm -hmm. switching your hairdresser because you don't like it. Why do we feel such internalized guilt about that? For full clarification, you're talking a different barber at the same shop. No, I'm talking about just in general. In general? Okay. Yeah, yeah I don't know. I feel like maybe you've invested time and they you've like chatted about things and it's like you feel like you owe them something on a personal level and they're nice so you don't want to take the money away from them you know yeah i've gotten bad haircuts from people and gone back because i'm like oh they were just having a weird day when in reality that's grounds to never go back to them again yeah but to your point yes i i've 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 gone as far as to switch barbers in the same shop and that gets a little uncomfortable yeah and i don't want it to be you know what i mean yeah. but it's kind of hard to not take that personal as the barber when your the your old client's still sitting there, you know what I mean. So how are we feeling in the chair? What is the energy? Uh, well, let me talk about this person, you guys. So I go to a barber in Brooklyn, and I went there initially as like an open booking, right? So I got assigned to the new barber. Yeah. I had nothing wrong with the new barber. We got along. I went twice, but there was another barber in the in the shop who knew who I was, whose girlfriend was a big fan of me, and was like, "Hey, like I'm so gassed that you're coming to our barber shop. If you ever gave me the chance, I would love." to cut your hair so i was like oh that's cool like and i really wasn't like bought into my current barber i'd only gone twice and this person had a rapport with me and like wanted to do it so one day when i went to go book my original barber wasn't available but my new barber was so i went to him and he did a great job 
He finessed it. So I kept going back. But intentionally, I'll book on days that the other barber doesn't work to not like be uncomfortable. But now that it's been so long, there is some overlap days. And the original barber like doesn't doesn't really like look at me or like acknowledge me. And yeah. maybe I'm reading into it too much, but it's so uncomfortable because I don't want there to be bad blood. I only went twice to them and there was nothing wrong with it. I just, I'm vibing with the other person and I'm not going to go back and I want to feel guilty because I love my current barber. Yeah. Okay. I can see that. I have a couple of situ- scenarios that I'm thinking of. Go for it. Scenario number one is that um, some, some conversation between those two barbers happened behind closed doors about you and him stealing you away from barber number one. That could be a thing. So there could be drama there and it's just like something that they don't want to talk about. But that's not your fault. You're like a client regardless, you know? Yeah. Um, Number two, Barbara number one could just totally have forgotten about the situation and not recognize you because they see so many faces every day. Absolutely not true. We had very deep conversations. Okay. Well, there goes situation number three. And I, yeah, I don't know. Yeah, I don't know. But it's not just me. Like, I've had friends that have switched hairdressers in the same salon. Like, it's uncomfortable. But I don't think it's fair as the consumer to have to feel guilted into staying with somebody if they're not doing the service that you want them to do. Yeah. I, maybe it's not you, but I know girls that have, like, stayed with hairdressers just just out of, like, comfortability when they, like, are doing the world's fucking ugliest balayage I've ever seen. <laughs> like, girl, I want low lights and they're getting fucking bleach strips. And they're like, no, it's fine. Like, she's really good. And I've been going here since I was 16. Like, it's okay to move on. Yeah. It's okay to move on, yeah. you know? I, I just hate feeling guilty about that. I know. But then kind of I'm thinking similarly when I went to go get my hair cut and I was in my hungover state, I saw my haircut girl cutting somebody else's hair and laughing with him. And I was like, now hold on a minute. That's our thing. I sit in that chair and I laugh. Why, who is this? Who's yeah. this man? Yeah. You should only be coming here for me. Yeah. yeah I, I got a little jealous. I got a little envious because I really like the girl who cuts my hair. So well, it felt weird. My barber today told me that he had nine cuts left after me and, he, and I was the second one. And he said it wasn't a full day. Right? So he's he's maxing out maybe at like 12. Yeah. He's doing 12. I go every two weeks. He works six days a week. 12 times six is what? 70. He's doing 100 and like 100, over 100 people in between us. So maybe Barbara number one really doesn't remember your face, babe. Not to be catty, babe. Not to like toot my own horn. We had a very full discussion about my TikTok career, about their presence on TV with twice. Okay? I, I have never sat in a barber chair. I've never sat in a hairdresser's chair and not talked their ear off for an hour. Okay? I don't sit in solemn silence. No, me neither. I, I don't. Lot, to say i make my presence known and i know this person knew who i was and it's it was beyond just my conversations like it was that we actually talked a lot but um I, i'm not making it up i don't want to sound fucking annoying right now but like they know who i am yeah there. you know what i mean they're yeah. very aware of who i am there so follow-up question yeah have you ever farted in the barber's chair no but this is a really crazy story that happened in barber's chair can i say something real quick about barber's chair oh my god i know what you're gonna say so when I got my second COVID dose, mm. I got the fever, like the COVID vaccine. So, you know, people get like sick from like the vaccine. The first one, I didn't get sick at all. Yeah. Second one, I got the fe- I got the fever. What did I get? What one did I get? Um, not, not the Moderna. Moderna. I got the Dolly Parton vaccine. So when I got that vaccine, you guys, I got a fever and I was on my way to go see you. Yeah. And I knew I wasn't like really sick. It was like a sickness from the fever. So I was like, oh, fuck it. It'll go away. I was going to break or whatever. So I made an appointment to the barber, which I don't want people to think that I'm being like, I'm going to the barber sick. I wasn't. It was like a sickness induced from the, does that make me bad? No, no, no. Because this like was fe- after. Yeah, it was. You it was, weren't sick. No, it wasn't sick. It was just like my body was working through the process of like handling the this vaccine yeah so it wasn't like a transferable like flu or something right so i go to the barber and i have a slight fever but it had gotten a little better but i'm still kind of feeling like shit and i was like just get the haircut done the fever's gonna go away i'm not gonna go see you when we were doing long distance and like feel like absolute shit so i i get in the chair and i'm not joking guys i had to go to a new barber that day because my barber from back home was closed so this was like a very like it was like a group of a very like straight, like straight Puerto Rican men that like I, I I was a fish out of water there, guys. I have a limp wrist and a lisp at all times. And I walked in there <laughs> and I'm like, hey. And like that guy is looking at me with like a tats on his neck and he's like, get the fuck out of here. So I sit down and I'm like, mm. <laughs> and my barber's really sweet, whatever. And I'm like, you know what? This is going to be really quick. It'll be 20 minutes. I'll be in and out. Um, And he starts and he puts, I'm not kidding you guys. He puts the razor to my temple goes down one line and something about that triggered 
like my fever to break and I start profusely sweating. I have never sweat more in my life. I was at my buckets, at my forehead, out of the back of my neck. My body was soaking wet and he's looking at me and he's like, oh my God. And I'm like, I'm so sorry. Like I just had the vaccine yesterday and I'm like, my fever broke. He's like, it's okay, it's okay. He used five face cloths on me, drenched in 20 minutes, wiping me yeah. like a like a baby. Like a baby. I tipped that man $50 and I ran out of there and he was like, here's my card. Cause he's like, I don't give a fuck. If you tip me 50 bucks, you can come back whenever. Yeah. I gave him $50 in cash as a tip. And I said, I am so sorry. And it was one of the worst moments of my life. You call, you FaceTimed me after this happened and I didn't know what happened. I thought you went down a damn water slide. I was like, why are, why is your hair soaked? And why is your shirt soaked? And so I, I, my fever broke in the chair, but he'd already done the first line down. So I was like, I'm, I was so uncomfortable. Yeah. Oh my God, the anxiety. Oh my God, you get me, he get passing me face cloths. It's a 20 minute haircut. How am I going through five face cloths? Yeah. And when you start sweating, you just, you keep sweating. And this was even worse because the fever. Well, hey, That's unrelated, shout out though. to that guy. That, that was, that was very nice of him to handle it. And afterwards you're like, I feel great. I'm wet, but I feel great. Yeah. I was, yeah. It was like, I felt amazing. After. Yeah. Just emba fine. embarrassed, but. Okay. Well, I have farted in, in the chair and then it gets quiet and it's like, well, it was someone in here. And there's nobody to the left or the right of us. And you know it wasn't you. And we're not going to talk about it. But that's my barber experience. Why didn't you just hold it? Was that one right now? No, that was my heel on the back of the chair. That sounded weird. Oh, <laughs> um, I don't know. Sometimes I try to hold it and then it's it's it just it falls right out. <laughs> and I can't catch it. Don't you hate when a fart falls out? It's like, and then you look around and you're like, what do you want me to do? <laughs> Oh my god, remember the other night you gassed us out downstairs? Can we please, let's be mature. Oh my god, you farted so bad the other night on the couch. And I look at you and you start to fan me. And, and the airflow is going towards me faster now as you're trying to get it to go away. I'm like, stop what you're doing. You've gassed out the room. I think this, I think this, you're being really immature right now. <laughs> My body functions in a way that everyone else's body functions in. And I think I need, you need to respect it. I, I do respect it, but I felt like my personal space was not respected in that moment. <laughs> it was. I put my it, face into the blanket and then you ran upstairs yeah. from your own scent. <laughs> no, I ran upstairs. I don't. I was grabbing the room spray. I was in a panic. Yeah. And then I was like, if you spray some goddamn floral notes over this ass smell, I'm not going to like, I'm going to freak out because that's the worst. No one wants to smell poop and Febreze. Be an adult and it'll, and it'll dissipate. And it did. And it did. It took a day. It took a full 24 hours. No, it did it. Okay, anyways, this is enough about this. What is your take a hike? Okay. <laughs> what is my take a hike? Okay. I really hate, and I feel like it's to nobody's fault. So I'm going to hate the situation as an overall. When you're watching somebody on stage or doing public Ugh. speaking, and it's going like really bad. I and know. I just, I hate it. And I don't hate them for it. I just hate the situation. We were watching RuPaul's Drag Race. And they were rehearsing for the comedy club night that they were doing, sponsored by Bubbly. Shout out, Bubbly. And it was just a little cringy to the point where, and I know a lot of it's editing and it's not as bad in person, but I just, I hate watching people crumble on stage or when they're doing the singing and it just sounds so bad. Like, you know, I I have to look away sometimes at that it's part. Hard. Or it's I hard to watch. I have to remove myself from the situation. Or, um, yeah, if somebody's on stage or, like, giving a speech in class. I remember in high school, like, when people would just be doing bad. And I'm like, you can hear their voices shaky. And it's happened to me, too. And it's it's impossible to turn off. But it's like, I just want you to do good. You, you got this. Let's both get through it as, like, an audience member. And that's campers. Keep this in mind. If you are doing a public speaking moment coming up or you are nervous speaking in front of crowds of people and you're being forced to do it, maybe you're in a wedding or something and you just have to talk in front of a bunch of people and you're nervous about it. And you think once you're up there with that microphone, everybody's judging you. Nobody's judging you, babe. Every single person in that audience is cheering you on. I swear to God, everybody wants it to be good. Nobody wants to sit through an absolutely awful experience. So just remember that whenever you start to get nervous, be like, okay, everybody in here wants me to do good. So I'm going to do good. It's so true. You told me that. I think I was doing Drew Barrymore and you were like, I was so nervous. And you're like, Zach, everybody in that room 
wants to watch you do amazing. It's so uncomfortable watching people struggle on stage. Yeah. It is because it's like no one enjoys that. It's uncomfortable. But it's a really nice thought to think like, okay, look, everybody in this room has my back because no one's a psychopath, hopefully, and wants to see me just ruin this, you know? Yeah. Public speaking is really difficult. As much as I love like doing like stuff like this with you or online, I think even in person, I do get a little like, <clears throat> like choked up a little bit because it's just it's stressful because you know what you want to say and for me like my mind works so much faster than my mouth that like i'm like just end up like blah, 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 you know what i mean i feel like i'm the opposite my mouth just spits things out that my brain can't catch up to i'm like what where are you going with this babe that's why sometimes i stutter have you noticed that no you don't really stutter i feel like i do i edit out a lot oh <laughs> a lot of my st th th stutters you're sharp sharp with the adobe yeah i am what can i say well i agree it's a good take a hike yeah Camper crush of the week. Who are we crushing on? Who are we snogging? Who are we kissing? Who are we hugging? Who are we making out with? Can I do a really good like fake TV kiss? Um, please. Cartoony. It's giving 1950s Betty Boot. Okay. How's that sound? Really good. I wonder if it'll be really crispy on the ears in the cars. Did it give you tingles, campers? It gave me ignige. Um, <laughs> anyways, Jonathan, who are you kissing? Who are you crushing on? Who are you loving? Guys, I'm crushing on. I happen to have a package right here. Irish potatoes. Whoever's editing this, can you cut in right there on YouTube? Thank you. Do you guys have it's you ever you, you're editing this? <laughs> have, you, have you ever had have you ever had Irish potatoes? I didn't know that this was a Philadelphia thing. Or I think like it just says a Pennsylvania thing, because we don't see them in stores around here. Basically what it is, and let me show you. I'll put a little picture up. Would you like one? I'm okay. Okay. They're these little tiny clusters and they look like potatoes. Aren't Actually, I want one. Yeah, here. Thank you. One. Um, but what they are is it's like coconut cream fondant and it's rolled in cinnamon. Cinnamon, yep. It's just literally straight up coconut cream rolled in cinnamon. And usually this batch isn't as great as they usually are. They're usually a little bit softer. Um, but hey, they're a great little treat. This brand is Orion's. And uh, it says it's original, 196 grams, net weight is seven ounces. I'm a slut for coconut. I love shredded coconut. Mm -hmm. It's sweet. It's very, okay, it's sickeningly sweet. Mm -hmm. I think it's the cream though. It seems like it's almost like a frosting on the yeah. other side. But then when you roll it with the cinnamon, it's got a little bit of spice to it. I had never heard of this. So I grew up in Massachusetts for like 27 years of my life. I had never heard of these because I think I would know about a dessert shape like a potato. I want to make it myself, though. I think it'd be really fun to make it myself. Yeah, I think they would, too. But actually, they had them in Illinois when I lived there. Oh. They had these. and um, Maybe I just didn't know about them. Yeah, I don't know. It definitely says Pennsylvania on the side. And when I Googled them today to find out, it said it was a Philadelphia thing. Hold for fire alarms. Yeah, what the Brooklyn's hell? on fire. What's going on? Camp Shady Birds. What's going on, girl? Stop smoking cigarettes behind the cabins. This is what happens. You know the part. You know the, the campground is full of pine needles, campers? It's a pine-based camp. And when you throw your butts in the pines and the whole place is on fire, Samich cannot run anymore. He has a wooden leg and a wheelchair. And a warrant out for his arrest. Oh, my God. It's not his fault. Really? Innocent until proven guilty. <laughs> um, anyways, I love those little traits. Yeah. So that's just my cute little crush of the week. And I think this is coming out the day before St. Patrick's Day. Two days before because St. Patrick's Day is on a Friday. This is the Wednesday. Mm, top of the morning to you. Top of the morning to you. It's a Gaelic kind of place. Oh, the dance of the Irish, like the Irish. When no, I was, no, that was good. That was bad. And that was, I was believing that you were an Irishman. I love that movie, Luck of the Irish. Luck of the Irish. Oh, it's so good with um, I was Kyle. Like, we should put that on tonight. Yeah, that's, that's a good a, one. That one I think will hold up. Mm -hmm. I love that kid. He's good. He is good. He's a good kid. He's a good kid. We'll have to check that out. So, um... What are you crushing on? I'm crushing on restaurants with private bathrooms. Yes, yes, yes. Don't you love when you have to take a fat shit at a restaurant and you walk up to the bathrooms and you're like, oh my God, there's five individual unisex stalls and they're closed doors and they're private little bathrooms. I don't like it when there's two because two feels competitive. If I don't feel good, if I have a tummy ache, I don't want there to be two because I feel like someone's waiting. If there's one, I, I cannot relax in one. If there is, If this is a restaurant with one restroom and it's singular, this is not included in this because mm -hmm. that's not, that's an anxiety attack. 
I went to a restaurant once. I'm not joking, you guys. It was a hallway of eight individual floor length doors. Anyone available. And they all had the little vacant sign, which I love because now you don't have to knock. Mm -hmm. It's green if it's open, red if it's closed. So you see me, don't even knock, okay? And then I feel like when there's eight, there's so much of a shuffle of doors opening left and right. So no one even knows how long you've even been in there. I have this anxiety problem when I'm in the bathroom and I don't feel good. And I know I've been in there for a while. And then I feel like, oh no, everyone knows I've been in there for a while, which is making me sicker, okay? So before we saw the Luann show this week, I went to a new restaurant that had reopened in, I won't say the name because that's just fresh. Um, And I ordered something. I got the wrong thing. Um, and it was a new restaurant. They yeah. were like, they just opened. I wasn't going to send it back. And I was like, I can see how they thought I ordered this. I didn't. And I ate it and it was really greasy. And I paid the fucking price for that. You did. Oh my God. I, my stomach was ripped to shreds. All that to say is the bathroom I went into was not my ideal bathroom. One year, no one stall. Mm. I'm panicking the entire time. I'm like, someone comes in here, they need to use it. It's not okay. I just like to go to a restaurant that has multiple bathrooms that are singular use. Yeah. I call them onesies. Every time you go to the bathroom and you come back, I'm like, is it onesies? And you're like, yeah, that's fucking weird. Like, just go. (laughs) Stop asking me and just find out yourself. You don't poop in public places, though. So you don't have this panic problem. Sometimes. I I have. Rare. Yeah. Okay. Let's hear that. He just went, I I have. People, if if you're like me and you have stomach issues, it's not I have. It's like, of course I do. I can drive down a stretch of road and point out every place I've shit at. Yeah. I'm not joking. I know places by the bathrooms. And let me tell you. Most public restrooms, atrocious. Yeah. No, I can I, usually a, hold it. You know who has the worst bathrooms? McDonald's. Places, well, yeah, but that's expected, right? You know that going into it. But shockingly, you go to like a Marshall's, a TJ Maxx. Yeah. First of all, can they get a cleaner in there once in a while? Mm-mm. They're run down. They look like 1977 in there. The grout has mold on it. The The baseboards are peeling off the walls. And it smells like a dead raccoon's in the ceiling tile. The stench. And I'm not helping it. I'm mm. not helping the problem with what I'm doing in there. Yeah, you're adding to the collection. I'm adding to something. All that to say is, if the restaurant has a singy, did you <laughs> say it? Sorry. Oh, <laughs> A A onesie? onesie. If the restaurant has a onesie, zip me up. I'm going in. (laughs) What song's been stuck in your head all week? Welcome to Camp Songs. Song of the week. The songs of our lives. The songs we wish were available on iTunes. Oh, wait, they are. But don't purchase them. Use our free playlist on Spotify and or YouTube that's curated every single week, campers. <laughs> Welcome back. What songs have been stuck in our head all week? Camp songs. <laughs> are you guys sick of hearing that? Should we change it up? Like the intro, not you singing that now, but like the intro, should we redo them at some point? I don't know. I feel like they're kind of a staple. Oh my God, my eyes welled up to think that people wouldn't like those. No, I think people love them. Don't cry. Don't cry. Look at my eyes. Can you zoom in on this? The thought of someone listening to that and thinking it was annoying really just gave me anxiety. Let's, we're taking it, we're changing all of them. Do you guys hate them? Oh my guys, God, we're done with this that. podcast. This podcast is over. I'm, Anyways, so, I I'm bouncing to... back. Why am I crying? <laughs> I don't know. Oh my God. Okay, what I was kidding. I, was I know, but now I'm like, oh wait, is that like annoying? Or are we annoying people with that? No, people come back. Oh, yeah, there you do. Hey, a lot of you do. Yeah, people are coming <laughs> back for 27, uh, 27 episodes. Okay, what is your song of the week? <sighs> guys, my song of the week is by Ace of Bass. The sign. I know you guys know that. I saw a sign. And, and it opened, opened up my mind. mind. I saw the sign. So so the song reminds me most of Stephanie Tanner because she did it for like her talent show with um with Gina. Gigi. What was her name? The bad. Is that what she's girl. dancing with the hip hop dance? Yeah, I think so. I swear it was an Ace of Bay song. It was very much like that time. It, it's what it reminds me of. Okay. I'm pretty sure it was Ace of Bay. No, when she was like doing that hip hop that like that, like Stephanie Tanner. She's, oh, like, when she's little? Yeah. It's no, like, no, no, no. This is <laughs> different this, this is the <laughs> so, later seasons sorry, sorry. i don't remember what that was i think it was probably just like some i don't something with saxophone probably <laughs> um so yes the sign by ace of bass everybody remembers it i remember it like it was yesterday because it's having a resurgence which i think is fun fresh and free and kind of crazy so the song came out in 1993 mm-hmm. you're born 19 years hey Lower our voice with that because this is the time where we don't have to keep bringing that up, sweetie. So then 19 years later, 19 years later, 2012, Pitch Perfect comes out. That is the huge song from the movie besides the cup song, but like 
I hate that song. So that has a whole resurgence again. Do you not remember it? I, mean, I don't remember. How, I don't remember it from the movie when they're dressed like um, flight attendants and they're doing the square thing. Oh, and that's when they change it up. Is that was the first song? Because she's like, the song is tired. It's from 1993. We need to freshen it up if we're going to use it. And that's when they start doing the remixes with everything. Yeah, with like Shoop too. I yeah, Shoop was a big song. Mm-hmm. So then, eleven years later, in 2023. Staples and Miller Lite, we were just talking about it, two different commercials. I'm seeing them all over Hulu. All over Hulu are using the sign the sign by Ace of Base and they've made their comeback. It's a cute song. It is a cute song. I like it. So I did a little research on the band because I was like, I know a lot of their songs. It's a beautiful life. All that she wants is another baby. Oh, I love it. All that she wants is another baby. He's gone tomorrow. So they have a lot of bops, like a yeah. lot of good songs. Um, so I was like, let me just do a little research because like what happened to them? Why did they stop making music? So um, there's four of them in Ace of Base and three of them are siblings. I had no idea. The two female singers and the one backup like DJ guy who basically ran the whole show and then his best friend. That's Ace of Base. There's four of them. Three of them are siblings, right? So the two girls is Lynn and Jenny and then Jonas is the brother. So Lynn had that very unique voice that like you can really pick out anywhere. You're like, oh, that's Ace of Bass because I, I can hear her, Me too. her voice. She said she never wanted to be a singer. She loved singing. She never wanted to do it professionally. And neither did her sister Jenny, but their brother was kind of like, I don't know. It's like what I used to do when I was a kid and, and to like my friends in the neighborhood and I wanted to make a movie. I'm like, no, you're going to be in it. They're like, no, I don't really want to do that. Make, <laughs> but the cameras are rolling, babe. Like, give me something. He kind of put together this band and fame, you know, hit them all really, really quickly. By 1994, they were like completely famous. I think they're from like Switzerland or something like that. So um, 1994, Jenny, one of the sisters, wakes up A girl is standing over her bed with a knife to her throat. A random crazed fan, a random crazed German fan broke into her parents' house. She was visiting her parents and she was looking for Lynn and she had a knife to Jenny's throat and was like, take me to Lynn, take me to your sister. Where's the rest of the band? She freaks out. Obviously the cops come, they take this woman who is mentally unwell. They get her taken care of. But Lynn was so scared because she was the one that this girl was looking for. She was like, I don't want to do this anymore. She pulled out of a tour that they were going to um, Madison Square Garden was the next show that they were going to do. And she pulled out. She was like, I'm not doing it. I'm not getting on a plane. She started getting like this absolutely like insane fear of planes where she didn't even want to like look at a plane. So she was like, that's it. I'm not touring. I'm not doing anything. These people are crazy. She said any of the promotional photos and videos that they've already took that are about to come out. She's like, I want my face blurred. I want no part of this. Like, I just want to fall to the background. Anything we're con- contractually obligated to take care of. I, I want to be backup vocal. And she kind of just faded. And that's what happened to Ace of Ace. Oh, so the whole, oh my God, that's really sad. Yeah, I know. They came back and they, I know, they did a couple of things and Jenny actually spoke about it in like 2013 or no, 2016, sorry. She did an interview talking about the experience because not a lot of people knew about that. I didn't know about it till today, but how crazy and scary is that? And we lost one of the iconic epic voices from Ace of Base because of a crazy person who broke into the parents' house. It's scary. That should have been my scary story on the campfire. That was scary. But yeah, sorry that was long winded, but that's my no, that was, camp I song. Did not see that twist yeah. coming. Okay. Uh, <laughs> um, my camp song is one of my favorite songs of all time. I can't believe I haven't talked about it yet. It's a little song from 1969, back from yesteryear. The song is titled Son of a Preacher Man mm. by Dusty Springfield. I love that song. I literally love this song so much. I sing it all the time. When that little mm-hmm. starts, it's so good. So Dusty Springfield is actually, um, she's from England. Oh, we did know Yeah, that. she's not American. And it, she kind of gives this kind of like Southern vibe to me. Yeah. Maybe it's the name, but she's she's very of, of the UK. And um, it's an amazing song about essentially a girl who's at home with her family and the preacher man comes over to meet up, hang out with the parents and her and the preacher's man's son walk to the backyard and 
they fall in love. Mm. They roll around the barn. Mm -hmm. They they bump uglies. Mm -hmm. They don't ever really say it, I feel, in it. They kind of just allude to it. But to me, the whole song is about like losing your virginity to like the pastor's kid. Yeah. And I just think that visual is just so camp, so fun. I just love music that like really paints a picture for me. And just the way, like, I don't know, like she breathes out the vocals. It's just so like for me, like like sexual and sexy, but not like she's not even really trying. Like being good isn't always easy. No how to ha I try. Uh -huh. <laughs> and then when he started sweet talking to me, like it's just it's so good. Um, but I was doing some research on the song and uh it was originally offered to Aretha Franklin. Really? And she said no. She said, I don't want to be associated with this because I could see it. she her parents were pastors. Uh-huh. And then afterwards she was like, Oh, wait, I messed up. And she ended up covering it later. It's been covered by huge, huge artists. Yeah. Artists. Elvis covered it, which is really crazy. Oh, he, okay. Uh, before he passed. And um also Joss Stone covered it. That was a real buzzword for me. Does any of the campers remember Joss Stone? No. Oh, wait, it, she's very of the time of like Cheryl Crow. Melissa Etheridge. Love Melissa. She's giving Alanis Morissette. I Which have to is, think of a song. Okay. I can't think of one off the top of my head, but okay. Joss Stone covered it. I was like, I haven't heard that name in a while. My favorite memory of this song is on an episode of The Office. Um, if you watch The Office, Jan Levinson Gould is one of my favorite characters. And there is this part in the show where um, Michael's preparing for Jan's baby shower. And he's like, Jan's going to have this baby. And it's like his estranged ex-girlfriend. And they're preparing for the baby with the baby shower. And Jan shows up to her own baby shower with the baby. The baby's already born. And all of the games and all of the themes for the baby shower are for someone who's not born. Like, when will the baby be born? How much is it going to weigh? And they make them play the games as if the baby isn't there. And Jan sits on the ground and sings to her baby in front of the entire office, Son of a Preacher Man, which is just such a weird, inappropriate song to sing at a baby shower. Yeah, that's so weird. Like, losing your virginity. Yeah. It's just so weird. But it's like, that show is just so funny to me. Um, and I just like, I, I think I think that's the first time I ever like really knew it, but I just I love it. I listen to it all the time. It's just so. so it good. is a really good song. Question: that I don't know if you know the answer to. Is her real name Dusty? I don't know. There is actually. It's funny that you say that. There is a. There was a really famous documentary about Dusty Springfield. She was like very of the time of like. Do you remember when like the music videos used to be like sets almost like or like or like they would do those TV specials and it would all be, like big like long sets. Yeah. Like it was very much that. Like it was okay. a really cool retro era. But they had a documentary about her because she's really famous in the UK, like mm -hmm. a huge star there. Um, and they have it on YouTube for free. It's an old documentary. Right oh. Free with ads, I'm sure. All that is to say, it's an old song, but it's definitely a good song. I love you, Dusty Springfield, and I love Son of a Preacher Man. Scary stories around the campfire. Caca! Caca! A crow flies over a full moon. A blood moon. Welcome back to scary stories around the campfire. Spooky. Hope we spooked you out with that intro. <laughs> I'm feeling creepy. I'm feeling sneaky. I'm feeling sassy. I don't know about you guys. Jonathan, what's on the docket this week, my little spooky booby? Okay, spooky so, nipple. Sorry. Spook <laughs> I said that. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So if you guys have a spooky story and you want to write in, you can go to campcounselorspodcast.com. Click the write in tab and send it on in. So this comes from a listener who writes, Hi, hope you enjoy this spooky story. I'm a huge fan of the podcast and general fangirl of yours. By the way, I heard Camp Shady Birch is looking for a new camp nurse in the infirmary. Look no further. I'm your girly. And then she sent the nail polish emoji. Oh, like cute. Little nail emoji. Hey, camp nurse. Anyway, strap on. <laughs> <laughs> As an oncology nurse, I'm no stranger to death in the dying process. It's part of life and unfortunately a big part of my job. I worked night shifts as a new nurse years ago and things were always a bit spookier at night. We had what we called the witching hour, which is when things were seemingly calm and quiet. Too quiet. There was no room 13 on our unit because it was considered bad luck, but the real bad luck always seemed to happen in room 6. Whenever we found out a patient was being placed in room six, an ominous black cloud hung over our heads, and the nurses would give each other a look with knowing eyes. So many patients that went into room six were very sick. 
but out of the ordinary complications which spring up in that room, and often patients who had extended stays would have bad luck after bad luck. When it seems like their illness couldn't get any worse, it did. One young adult patient in particular, we'll call him Joey, spent months suffering in that room before his death. The next patient who went into room six pulled on my heartstrings and became my buddy. At first, when I was reading it, I thought she said and became my hubby. And I was like, oh my God, she fell in love with the patient. Like, that's not OSHA, but that's such a sweet story. But it's not. It was just a buddy. Not OSHA. <laughs> Whatever it's called. Um, so, uh, okay. He was kind of a jokey uncle, not a creepy one. Okay, well, that's good to know. Anyway, patients don't get much rest in the hospital, constantly being woken up for lab draws and vitals and meds. So I used to put a sign on his door that no one could enter the room except for me in hopes that he could get some rest. I would only wake him up once throughout the night if I could swing it to do all of the nursing duties. I would also do my charting outside his room to make sure no one went in. On one particularly slow night, when I went in to wake up Uncle Buddy, he was all pissed off. He said, really? Again? To which I replied, no one's come in here all night. It's just me. And I was sure of it. He looked at me and said, no, a young guy just came in here. I responded to him cautiously, that's not possible. He says, yes. He looked right at me at the foot of my bed. Then he walked in the bathroom. He hasn't come out yet. <gasps> what? I don't know if he's cleaning staff or something. I looked over to the bathroom. The door is closed. The door was open when I came in here earlier and this patient had a bed alarm so he couldn't get up without my assistance. He told me what the young guy had looked like and gave the exact description of Joey, the previous patient in room six. I did my best to hide the fear on my face. When patients are close to dying, the lines between the living and the past are pretty blurred, but I had never gotten quite that close before. Signed, your camper in the infirmary. That was a crazy story. I never really considered how haunted like hospitals could be because there are certain people that like pass away there. Yeah. Um. That is really spooky. Yeah. I so I is uh, going back to the 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 Ouija board. I do believe in spirits. I am a very spiritual person, and I do think that there is some sort of like connection to that. Yeah. And that's why I'm like I'm not messing with it because it's I I think it's possible. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? Like I don't understand how I like digest food, let alone the spiritual world. So there's a lot <laughs> of things to be I don't know understand about. Right. So it makes sense. Yeah. So he wasn't like attacked though or anything. He was just no, he woke said, him up to be rude. Joey. I guess. But then wow, wow. he put the door to be closed and for her to be like. Did yeah. she open the door? She, yeah. She said that the bathroom door was open at, when she was in there before. No, and but he, did she open the door after like when she went in there? She, was so, she didn't say. To be she, continued, I guess. She said, I'm not even going to check. Why? Well, she was like some creepy cleaning dude in there or something and she never checked <laughs> it. She's like, oh, Joey. It's like a creep in there. He's like. <laughs> Ew, drinking um, the toilet water. Stop it. Oh, God. God bless all the nurse campers. Thank you for everything that you do. You guys see some stuff. Yeah, and thanks for that scary story. That really did yeah. scare me at the end. Yeah, I know. It was very spooky. If you guys have any stories or uh, Gossip Doc, which will be returning next week. Um, what else? We have Dear Counselor. Confession Canoe. Confession Canoe. I don't know. I, my brain becomes like mud by this point in the episode so mm -hmm. sorry guys but you can go to campcounselorspodcast.com to send all of that in i think that's uh all we got and if you're looking for some more bonus content featuring me and counselor jonathan you can go to patreon.com slash camp counselors for bonus episodes eating quizzes <laughs> hidden vlogs a little bit of gossip and tea just the girls being girls in cabin five we love our sassy campers um but i think that's all we have for today's episode we love you guys so much thanks for hanging with us yeah. you're the best part of our day and our lives with that being said lights, lights out, out campers, campers.